welcome to another episode of Vet Talk. I'm Brother Vince. I'm a disabled veteran. And today I want to talk to you about applying for veteran benefits. And I have five tips for caregivers and spouses. Yes, five tips for caregivers and spouses. But before we get into that, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You can find more content for Vet Talk on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Reddit for more content. And if you're a veteran and would love to share your stories or resource for other veterans, please feel free to contact me ASAP so we can schedule a meeting. Now that we gotten all of the important business aspect out of the way, let's get into this article. So as you can see here, I have five tips for you that was written in this article by Miss Annie May Bet Botek. And I think it's pretty cool what she wrote because she goes in to explain a lot of different things that will help you, me as veterans, make sure that we get the best care and maximize our benefits. So the first tip she gave out of the five things to know when applying for and managing VA benefits, the first thing that she talks about is the VA does not recognize power of attorney. This revelation may come to in a shock to family caregivers who are used to hearing about how important it is for seniors to draft durable power of attorney documents for health care and financial naming agents to act on their behalf in, the ma in these matters. However, the VA sets its own strict rules for recognizing power of attorney, much like the Social Security Administration does not recognize financial POAs for managing another beneficiary benefits. If a veteran is competent and simply wishes for a person such as a family member to handle their claim for benefits, they can complete the VA Form 21-22A to appoint them as their one-time representative. Similarly, as a similarly, a competent VA beneficiary may use VA Form 21-0845 to designate an authorized third party to receive information contained in their VA records. But this authorization does not grant the ability to manage or change any information therein. Number two, you can expedite a VA application. The VA has specific rules in place to expedite the application and appeals of veterans and survivors who are terminally ill of advanced age or experiencing serious financial hardship, homelessness, bankruptcy, etc. If any of these conditions apply, make sure the VA office handles the application on appeal, is aware of this by filing a written request of priority processing along with their other paperwork. An expedited determination isn't guaranteed, but it can hurt it cannot hurt to provide the VA with all information pertaining to the claimant's medical and financial situation. Number three, you don't have to be ill to qualify for VA pension. One little known element of the VA pension program is that when a veteran turns 65, they are considered 100% disabled in the eyes of the VA. This means that a veteran or their surviving spouses with low income and limited assets can be eligible for a pension, even if they have no major health conditions. Of course, increased pension amounts are available through aid and attendance in the Homebound Benefit Program for eligible veterans and surviving spouses who are ill, disabled, and or require higher level of care. Number four, current veteran benefits end when a veteran dies. If a veteran dies before their dependents, any pension or disability compensation benefits that have been received will stop. A completely new application must be submitted to the VA for new types of benefits intended for veteran survivors and dependents. Along with a death certificate, the survivor must apply all additional documents required for the necessary benefits they are looking to apply for or reinstate. Necessary paperwork might include deceased veteran discharge papers, marriage certificates, information regarding income, assets, and expenses, a physician statement detailing the survivor's medical diagnosis and ability to care for themselves, and a statement from their long-term care provider, assisted living community, home care agency, etc., detailing their cost of care information. Even if these documents were already submitted to the VA, they must be resent after a veteran died. 
It can take time for the VA to process application for benefits like the surviving pension. So it is important to be prepared and start the paperwork as soon as possible. And number five, calling the VA can be tricky. When calling the VA to ask questions or check the status of an application, make sure you're talking to the local VA office th that service the area or region in which the veteran or surviving spouse lives. Be aware the VA number 1-800-827-1000 automatically routes callers to the local VA office that's nearest to them. For long distance caregivers, this routing process is most likely not connected to the same office that is handling a loved one's application or VA record. If you are directed to a different VA office, you won't be able to attain any information. The individual office are not allowed to pull files on beneficiaries or applicants who do not live in their jurisdiction. If you do not feel like spending time on the phone, the VA also offers a comprehensive online platform at va.gov where veterans and survivors can file claims, check the status of claims, appeals, and manage health care benefits and more. So what I'm going to do with all this information in this article, I'm going to put it down in the description so that you can go back over it, read it, because in some of it, I didn't, um, in the first one, I didn't read all of the information. I just read enough to where, you know, the five tips that were given in this article for, you know, spouses and caregivers. So this has been another episode with your boy, brother Vince for Vet Talk. As always, Vet Talk out.